Jay, thank you so much for inviting me to um, yeah have this moment to like share. And I think it's important. Conversations matter, don't they? Like they really matter. Um, and it's an opportunity to get to know people better and to see where the web of conversations interlink and go in different ways. Um, so I'm Gavin and I live in um, Forest um, with my wife Catherine and my son Oliver and Alice, my daughter, and our little dog Millie. Um, and there's definitely a story that I'll share about how I got to here. Um, but I, I currently work for a beautiful charity called Who Cares Scotland. Um, so we, we work with children, young people and adults who are in through or out of the care, the care system or care and protection system. Um, so they are care experienced. And it's such an honour to be able to work with, with our children, our young people and our adults who often have some of the hardest times growing up and through their lives um, and helping to support their voice being heard collectively um, to make change um, at a national level. It's, it's quite humbling and very honouring. Um, and it probably, where I am now, wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for who I have been to where I've got to. Um, so I'd love to share with you sort of teaching that I was taught. It's, a, it's like a map, it's not the road, but it's definitely a map that guides. Um, it's something that I learnt and how I got to that point, I'll, I'll, share, I'll share again. Actually, I'll share now. So um, I really wanted to, to learn more about rites of passage um, and um, I, I got the opportunity to work with the School of Lost Borders um, in California. And how I got there was an amazing story in manifestation in itself and that great gift of believing in yourself. So I didn't have enough money. Um, we, we had our young children and we wanted to at some point move house, but there was definitely, and there was a bit of debt, but there was, there was an urging inside of me that was like, I really believe that I should do this training. So it was the, the um, five week program for vision fast guides training. So training around leading vision fasts um, and all things rites of passage just has always been an important element of that transition from different phases in our lives. Um, but I didn't have the money. It was quite expensive. So I had to, I woke up this notion um, one day of like, I need to manifest this money. Like I believe in myself enough that I can make that happen. Um, and in that moment of asking the universe, like how am I gonna create this, help me. Um, an email popped up within the, the, the day of that sort of moment. And it was from Deal or No Deal, a Channel 4 program. Some people may know of it. And I'd not normally, do, I must have signed up at some point and the thing came and saying, it's open, you know, apply. And I was like, and I would not normally be the sort of person that would apply, but it felt like guided or like inspiration or the right thing. And I just went, I'm gonna apply. So I applied and I put a wee video up of me playing with the kids. And um, I got, it, there was a lot of interviews. You know, I, I was, um, I was the award officer for the Duke of Edinburgh's Award for Murray Council at that time. Um, and so one of the interviews was on top of a mountain uh, overseeing them when they were, they were doing the interview. It was brilliant. It was really good fun. And I think they got a sense of who I was and, and took me forward. But ultimately, the short story is I just had this feeling that I would walk out of that experience like, yes, like, ah. Oh. And I really felt... Um, Sylvia beautifully spoke about Abraham Hicks and there's something around that law of manifestation when if you feel it you can energize your, your reality more so I just held to that feeling of like things are going to be good I didn't focus on how much money I might win or anything like that. it was more about the experience of just this is a good opportunity and so I held that image all the way through um, and by the end result I ended up phoning my wife Catherine saying you won't believe it, I've just won £18,000, which was phenomenal. Now she said, £80,000? I was like, no, 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 18, just, just before you <laughs> start spending anything. But it allowed us to, to you know, put a bit of, spend a bit, you know, pay off a bit of debt, buy a few things, and ultimately allowed me to get to the School of Lost Borders. So I think it's a real story in trusting yourself and that guidance that you often get or that inspiration or those moments of like, oh, I should try this because I wouldn't normally do that. But what it led me to is an amazing teaching around the four shields of human nature. And I'd love to just share a little bit of that because I think it gives context to my story. Okay. Great. So my little caveat is that um, there are wiser and more intelligent people that probably can share this teaching. I just wanted to share a little bit about why it means so much to me. Um, and the four shields of human nature is that cyclical seasons. Um, and so on, on what, and there's so many, there's much depth to how many times we go around the, the, the circle or the shields or the seasons. Um, but for this example, um, in the East, 
we have birth, we have new life being born, um, the col colour of yellow, and it's also the colour of spirituality as it comes round full circle. Um, but from birth, we move into childhood, into that summer, um, that sense, this is the wrong way round, the redness of summer, that sun, that body feeling of young children growing up and experiencing beauty and sadness and, and falling over and getting up and the sense of just learning a bit about who you are um, as a young child, needing support, which we'll come to in a second, um, often from the parents in the north. Um, but the South Child is about excitement and adventure. And as we move through our cycle, um, we move into adolescence, into fall. So from spring, summer into autumn. Um, and that uh, represented by the dark stone, often I can relate this to my own adolescence when I just struggled. I didn't understand the world. I didn't understand myself. And I was going through a lot of pain and anger and frustration. And one of the gifts I'd love to share that I wish I'd heard earlier was that's exactly where you're meant to be in this moment. You have to, as, a, as the adolescents, go through this journey. Um, some people call it the dark night of the soul or that threshold into adulthood. And by going through, through that unknown, you know, teenagers often wear dark, they rebel, and it's all meant to be. It's not wrong. And if I'd known that what I was going through wasn't wrong, I think I would have a different life because I felt things were wrong and it's not. We have to go through this and we have to go through this hero's journey to emerge from the adolescent that we were into the adult that we're becoming, the North, the white, that sense of responsibility. So there can often be a lot of darkness in the West, that psyche, that working things out, that struggle, but through working through it, through both the support from the outer world of, of of people helping us in situations, but also our own inner resources inside of us, that when we connect and recognize that we're beautiful, that we have everything we ever need, and that we're more than we could ever imagine. And when we believe that, we have the strength to, to, to carry on um, on the hero's journey. Um, Joseph Campbell talks a lot about the hero's journey, and we'll, we'll come back, back to that in a moment. So the, the North, the adult, the responsibility, that sense of, 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 of being a parent. So in my case, being a parent and a, and a, and a husband and a man and that, all those things that I need. And through that process of, of age and the seasons, we move into the, the East of eldership. Um, often, I often see that as that space of spiritual yearning, of coming closer to the life-death cycle. And through that period, our elders as wise holders of wisdom and knowledge can help us as a community, as a society, as a species. So there's something really beautiful here about this transition because it's a life death. We, we, we die as the elderly um, and at the same time in this threshold that new life is born and continues, this, continues the cycle of life. So what really inspires me is when I hear about the other threshold, which is on the other side of the shield, which is this threshold from adolescence into adulthood, this moment where we have to go into ourselves. We often have to embark on an adventure, on the hero's journey. Um, Joseph Campbell, who brought so much mythology um, to life and understanding the similarities. So whether it's going out to fight the witch who's holding people hostage or the knight going into the cave to fight the dragon, to discover the treasure. Whatever that is, we go out, we, we cross the threshold, we leave behind what was, what, who we were before in the knowledge that we have a, an adventure ahead of us. And we, at some point, come home. It's really important to come home. We come back from this experience with our scars, but also our wounds exposed and, and we've worked through it. And also that, those golden nuggets of wisdom or experience that we can share with our community. There's that sense of responsibility to be able to share. And there's something around our community being able to be open to hear. And so for young people, I often find when I didn't feel listened to, that we have a responsibility to listen to our young people. They are, they are the keepers. They will be our elders in the future. They're here to change the world. And if we can listen to them more, I think our world would be a, a better and more beautiful place. Um, there is so much to this, but I, I'd love to finish with the fifth shield, which is often the sail. Um, children need 
they need, if you're, if you're out of balance, so for me as an adult, as a parent, <laughs> as someone who works loads of hours and gets, can find myself getting stressed, what I need is the opposite. This is out of balance. To, to be balanced, I need to be whole. I need the other side. I need a bit more summer. I need a bit more fun and frivolity and that child within me. Because if I can balance that child within me and that fun with my responsibility, I feel more whole. Um, and, and children, children need their parents in their early formative years they need their parents and where we see that doesn't work we know that society and our children struggle and um, so this really is an interesting one of parent children but it also reflects beautifully on our society because what often our teenagers need our adolescents need isn't necessarily the parents they're the ones that need the elders in our community you know an evolved society would show how well it looks after its, its youngest and its oldest in society and I think we've got a lot to learn from from where we are and um, there's something really beautiful about asking our elders in the community to support all of us but especially our adolescents and I remember a story that I was I was told was the parents coming to the elders knocking on the doors and saying these young people are going crazy they are they're disrupting they're breaking things down they're vandalizing things they're saying inappropriate things and we as parents as the middlers we are we're lost we don't know how to deal with this and the elders smiled and they said it's because this is meant to happen this is exactly the moment that they come into their own self this is the moment where we as elders knock on the door and we say say goodbye to your son or daughter because they will not be coming back and they take them away and the, the, the females would take the females out or the men would take the men out and they would do rites of passage. They would learn their tools, their trades. They would go on a journey on their own out into the wilderness to fast, to be in themselves, to, to look at themselves, deal with their own demons, deal with their own wounds and through that process come home, come back to their community. And so the door was knocked again and for the parents who opened it, the elder would say, I'm sorry, but your son is gone. I would like you to introduce you to the man that he is now. And there's something really powerful about our ancient cultures that we can learn from, and modern day cultures as well. So like the Duke of Edinburgh's award that I've, for, for eight years I worked with Murray Council, I loved so much because I felt that that's a modern day rite of passage where children, where young people could take responsibility, learn new skills, be themselves, but ultimately they worked together. They had to do their expedition, camping and, and traversing diff difficult terrain, the team dynamics. Something about that was a positive rite of passage into their, into their, um, into their adult, adult years. So thank you for letting me share a little bit. There's so much more depth. You can go into so much more. Um, but what it does is it helps share probably my story in the context of, I think I was sharing a little bit about myself as, an, as a teenager where I really struggled with understanding life. Um, and there was definitely anger and frustration. As a child, I had such a loving family. I, I, I was blessed to have so much good fortune. And I think as the adolescent, I was trying to work out who I was. And as the adult, I think I still am. <laughs> I'm still trying to be a good father, a good parent, um, a good husband, and a good man, um, honoring the feminine and honoring the community. Um, I don't always get it right. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah, I just wanted to say the, the four shields of human nature, just the, when I remember to connect in with them, I recognize it's a good path or it's a good map to where I am and what I need. So when I shared that sense of too much in the north, maybe I need a bit more fun, less, less rigidity and responsibility and, and vice versa. But the, te the teaching um, c c uh, came to us through Stephen Foster and Meredith Little um, and also uh, Gigi Coyle um, from the School of Lost Borders. So a huge thank you to the work they do mm. not just in, in America but across the world and um, so many amazing um, guides that can support us in, in this and I think like just as we're here today it's that those conversations that really matter because we just we need to talk more sometimes we forget that in sharing we can we can hear ourselves through the other um, and it just feels so important especially in these times mm. these times that we're in we need each other more than than ever so, so it really helps me by sharing the sort of the seasons or the four shields. Um, it, it reminds me of a time, um, so I was working in Glasgow and it was a sales, very sales oriented. I was a senior sales manager um, 
and uh, so much so much good memories of good things but also there was something in me that was that wasn't that was missing and there was a journey ahead of me this sort of hero's journey and and at that moment I um I quit my job and went traveling around South America Mexico planned to stay a week uh stayed four weeks loved learning the Spanish language in Mexico and just the culture and I traveled down um, to Peru, through Bolivia, Lake Titicaca, and it was just an amazing adventure. And I think there was a sense of reaching out and trying to discover the world and my place within it. Yeah. Um, and there was definitely a, a trying to make sense of my world. So this, this adolescent that become older, but yet not yet feeling like an adult responsible, um, yearning to understand more. And um, I feel like the talking piece from Sylvia has been passed over. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, she talks about Machu Picchu and there was a moment, um, there was a real spiritual awakening for me. Um, we were doing the four day trek up to Machu Picchu and on the last day, I, got, I just had an impulse to get up really early and run. And these are huge, big stone slabs that you run up. It was definitely fitter back then. And I got to the sun gates <laughs> and the, um, the sun gate. And later on, I realized you weren't allowed to, to walk on them or climb them or anything, but there was no one about. And I just had this impulse to be on top of one of the sun gates. And I stood up and the sun opened and rose and cleared away the mist. And Machu Picchu was suddenly came like, you know, one of those moments where I had tears streaming down my eyes, crying of happiness. There was bubbling energy below the earth coming up through me. There was a real sense of awakening. There was a sense of Machu Picchu being a moment I've, I've been wanting to get to for a long time in my life. And this was like a coming home or a an awakening of some sorts. It was very powerful. It was just me there for like an hour. And then in the distance, I could hear the rest of my group coming up. And the, the clouds then came back as I got down and they all arrived and went, oh, there's nothing to see. And I was just like, gratitude. That real appreciation for life giving me a moment to, um, to experience something that I clearly needed to experience. Um, and I think that does link on, so gratitude I think you asked me, you know, what's, what's that gift or that thing you would say to others? And I think it's about learning that appreciation, the energy of appreciation and gratitude when it's so part of our lives and we remember to connect in with it, it life flows, life continues. I think sometimes we forget the abundance we have in our lives. And for me, that sort of spiral downwards when I've not got good thoughts leads down. And all it can take is just that one thing of being grateful for breathing, the sun, you know, nature, a person that's helped, a child, my children, a moment, whatever that is, there's something really precious. And I think that's something for our, our young people to remember is what are you grateful for? Because it connects you to who you are and, and how you're moving forward. I think it links to the deal or no deal moment where I manifested something. What I, it wasn't just the energy of like, yes, I could physically see myself being really happy, but there was also a gratitude. It was almost like I quantum jumped ahead of time to, to, to the, where I was. And I was just so grateful to have had that experience, met those people and come away with some money. So there is something around that, that attracting and creating. I am... Um, my story of how I got here, during traveling South America, I then traveled into uh, Australia and New Zealand. So New Zealand first. And I remember sitting in a little chalet, looking down. It was stormy weather. It was crazy. I was reading a book by Diane Cooper. And in the book, it was a spiritual adventure story. Um, it, it mentioned this, what I thought was a you know fictional um community in the northeast of Scotland called Findhorn Foundation and I remember in that moment really vividly putting the book down and looking up to God, Spirit, all and I just went I wish this was real like I thought I didn't th I thought it was just a story and I just I, I cried and I remember that really there was something inside of me yearning to connect with other people that were on their own journey um, so that moment led on to finishing my travels and, and I went back to work in a beautiful charity for visually impaired people in, in Glasgow. And I remember on the computer one day, Fintorn Foundation popped up. I fell off, literally fell off my chair. Oh my God, it's real. 
there's people out there like me that are wanting to explore, wanting to learn and, and, and collaborate together. And so within like a month, I was up doing my first experience week and, and then LCG, lots of different courses. Um, I met a dear and beautiful friend, Katerina Broca, who um, has a lot to answer for in lots of good ways. So she introduced me to, to my wife, Catherine. Uh, we got married in Calern Gardens, literally we were almost where we met, where Katerina introduced us. Um, I am part of the same group that Sylvia is part of in the Christ Consciousness Meditation. Um, there's something really beautiful about connecting to the earth, connecting to the universe, connecting to ourselves, to ourselves as a healing circle and placing people in the center to just bless them and, and wish them well and give them healing. And then also afterwards to send that out to the world to where it's needed most. Lovely group, I'm really blessed to be part of it. Um, so I feel Sylvia's passed the talking piece on to me for that moment. Um, yes, um, I love the way that nature is for all of us, free and freedom. And there's something around um, whether consciously choosing to go out for a purpose in nature or whether it's just an going for a walk because you know it feels good. I think um, for many of us, it is a form of meditation. It's a form of just whether with others or in yourself. I love spending time on my own when I can, whether sitting under a tree and just feeling like I can ground. Um, and there's just a stillness. Um, and there's like that presence, that present centered moment that I guess mindfulness talks, talks a lot about um, that connects into the wider reality that I'm a part of, um, but not the only part of. Um, so there's something around, and again, it is linked to appreciation. I find my connection with nature is when I can appreciate the beauty of the littlest thing or the biggest thing and just seeing it as something that's gorgeous and stunning and beautiful. Even when you see another insect eating another insect or that life death cycle, there is something harmonious within that um, from, from one perspective. Um, I've really loved those moments when I've fasted in nature, whether on a vision quest, um, so especially on a vision quest when, so biologically when you fast, you, your energy system shifts from the digestion to awareness because you're not needing as much energy. And so I remember a moment where um, on a vision fast in Culvin Forest, where just a little butterfly was literally, you could see its wing, you know, it was just really slow. And you could literally touch, you know, you could hold out your hand and it could, la it didn't land on me, but it just flew past. But there's something around when I slow down, I can see nature in a different way. I'd see a new story emerging through, through my lens of perception. Because so often I'm so busy thinking about my things that I don't see a wider picture of nature. And I think that's something I want to continue to explore myself with others as well. We all see things differently, but I think it's the beauty of sharing stories mm. that we see that. Um, yeah. Beautiful. So if I was a tree, what tree would I be? Feels like a song. Um, mm -hmm. I've got an image of the as above, so below, the tree of life. So the, the beautiful um, outbreath almost or expansion of the tree and coming into the roots and into the ground, but at the same time, those roots becoming the, the tree as above, so below. Um, I'd love to be an oak tree. I think I'd like to be quite slow. Um, and there for a long time. And there's something around the wisdom that oaks hold. Um, and yeah, not sh ashamed of who it is. It's, it's who it is. And that oak um, stands to the testament of time um, and sharing the wisdom of who it is on deeper levels. And just, it's strong, it's big, it's, 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 it's grounded, yet it's also reaching to the universe. Um, there's something around growth as well, but slow and it's okay for patience. It's okay that sometimes things take time. It's probably a lesson for me in the, the wanting things to happen quicker and the recognition of, okay, let's just slow down and see where life needs to take us. Um, mm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel really blessed. I work, um, I'm, I, I, I work with the this CLD Standards Council, so Community Learning Development Standards Council. It's the professional body that um, supports 
like youth work, adult work, lifelong learning, everything and anything volunteering to do with community. Um, is the, the CLD Standards Council is the, the professional body and there's something amazing about these people that give up their time to, to support this work. And I'd love to get more involved in, in, in what they do, and, but also in nature. I think there's, there's a community workers, youth workers have a natural affinity to, to nature and, and we recognise our young people need that. It's our, sometimes we're too institutionalised. We've, we've inherited an educational system from the past that we need to look to see if it works for our future. Um, and there's something around the, the barriers that we build and whether it's physical wall, walls or um, segmenting things of like, how do we liberate what we've done in the past to today to something that could be completely different? And I think there's something really exciting about what are these conversations we're going to have about how we as a society want to make a better world and what it will look like. So it comes back to something I said right at the beginning, which was an evolved society. If, if, if people were looking at us, so if, for example, um, another civilization, the stars, was looking at us, they would be looking at how evolved a society was and some markers of that is how well do we look after our children? How well do we look after our elderly? And I think there's a conversation, we've often in the past put them into homes and forgotten about them, whether that's our children or our elders. And I think that's a really good grounding for me to recognise where we've not got things right as a species. And there's something just to finish, because it ties back into nature, is I love the way deep ecologists would say species have intrinsic value. So humanity has an intrinsic value to be here on planet Earth but not the only. We have that, we've had that ego in the past where we've we have destroyed, we've created, we've consumed, um, and we can see the, the, the effects of that right now. But a tree has the same intrinsic value as a human being, and any species does. And I think there's something about humility and coming back to recognising we're one part of the wider ecosystem, not just on Earth, in the universe, that um, we need to be humbled, and we need to respect life, but we can learn from it. You know, we can learn from the design of nature to recognize how we can make things better. So I'm really hopeful, you know, some people look at it from a quite pessimistic in the times that we're in, but I also think this is an opportunity for us to change what doesn't work and start changing and making things that do. So yeah, excited to have those conversations and be part of that. Yeah, there's something else, that, something around being up here um, as part of my journey to where I am now um, was, was working with the World Peace Prayer Society and an amazing organisation um, very much linked called Biako Shinko Kai, uh, so um, described as the White Light Association. And um, I'm always conscious of like, how words and language um, can put people off but can also can, like, can connect us as well. Um, so it's, it's very much framed around the declaration or prayer, um, may peace prevail on earth. Mm. And so when I started discovering the work that they were doing, I just fell in love. Um, and one of the first moments um, was when I, I got to participate in a world peace um, prayer ceremony with the cards, the bigger ceremonies with the flags. Mm -hmm. There's something beautiful about naming every country in the world Afghanistan, may peace be in Afghanistan, and thinking about everything that makes up that country, from the atoms and nature to the people and the, the karma, the history, all of it, and recognizing we all long for and want to create a better world. And using the countries is a good way of connecting in with the diversity of cultures and peoples that come from different regions. Um, so the cards often flow in a mandala with a peace pole in the middle, and everyone gets to share. And I remember just crying just tears of joy of, like, of feeling connected with other people that wanted good things for the world and this was like a, a way of doing it, of just of sending out good positive vibes. Um, and if we believe that our thoughts, words and actions co-create or create our lives and as we think more positively and send it out, we're, we're creating a better world. There's something about that inner, our inner world and being able to see it through our outer world and not being the victim to the outer world. So there's a real, like, that's a journey for me in seeing that. Um, definitely not the end, it's always a journey. <laughs> yeah. And I, I loved I loved those moments with the big flags. So these are flags that, um, in Byaku Shinko Kai, these beautiful Japanese women 
made from hand and we're lucky enough to have a set in Fintorn and um, we've used many ceremonies um, in the past and they'd colour them in with pens over and over and again they would pray may peace prevail on earth just that lovely declaration and when you hold these up in Avis Primary School, we did one a few years ago. We planted a peace pole, and the, the, the children and, and the and the teachers and, and the and the, the parents as well got a chance to represent a country by holding the flag and naming, you know, naming a country. And Belgium, may peace be in Belgium, and everyone collectively doing that. And there was something around the community sending that good vibration, those good feelings out, and that's what it's about. It's about us being able to connect and knowing where we want to go to. And even if we don't have a clear roadmap for what society should look like, we can still send good feelings and thoughts because they do go somewhere. Quantum physics knows you know, that, that our thoughts affect the reality that we create. So oh, it could get really deep. <laughs> um, but there's something, yeah, there's something beautiful about the, the movement of the, the peace, peace poles of May Peace Prevail on Earth and, and the, the community being able to come along in a a shared journey of, of wanting to help. And I think we need we do need that more than ever, especially in the times that we're in. As, and as hopefully we come out of them into a new, a new world, what do we want to create? I remember Fintorn did the, the new story summit and it's like, what is the stories? I've shared a little bit about my story from the past, but who am I now? And what is the, what is the community that I live in now? And how do I wish to serve and, and be a part of? So these are really good questions. I'm very curious, like I love that curiosity. Um, so, and something I'd love to say is it links back to appreciation and gratitude. It's just, it's gratitude to you, Jay, for inviting me to, to, to say a few words. I hope like it's been of interest. Um, and at the same time, that's just my sort of train of thought in this moment of who, who I have been and who I am now. Um, I would love to hear from you at some point. I hope further down the line, we could hear why you came up with this sort of style and, and inviting people in because we need it. We so need to hear from each other. And everyone's story matters. There isn't a story out there that doesn't matter. Like we're all part of that jigsaw that when we fit together, we make life better. And we so need to hear from everyone. And I think there's something about vulnerability, like that ability to just be okay with not being okay and, and, and not feeling we have to put on lots of masks. So those moments when we feel more vulnerable is the, is, are the moments when we as community can come together and recognise beauty and people who they are and, and step forward to support each other. So like, thank you for all that you've been doing. And I hope we get to hear from you at some point. Great. <laughs> thank you.